morning, everybody. We woke up early this morning and we just got this more left to deliver. This is going to Vagraville, Alberta, and then I have to run south of Edmonton to Nisku and pick something up there. So I have this thing chained down, one at the front here with protections around it, one at the back, and then I have this strap here that's sucked into both sides. We call that a belly wrap. It was around there, so it's holding it down. It's also holding it this way and holding it that way, so that tongue right there cannot move anywhere. I mean, it's got the chains on it, so it's not, but the strap is extra insurance. Just getting everything moving here, getting the blood moving in uh, Old Blue, and then we're going to hit the road. Well, I think it's about another half hour down the road where this goes. And then about another hour, hour and a half from there, it's Nisku. I don't know what it is exactly. I think it's parts for an excavator or an excavator itself. But it's gonna go up here on the kick on the front of my trailer. And then tomorrow, in Saskatchewan, on my way back home, I'm picking up a, <coughs> like a 40 foot culvert. <coughs> Excuse me. A 40 foot culvert that's gonna go on the bottom here. That's gonna fill up most of the rest of my trailer. And I'm gonna take all of that back to Manitoba. It's another beautiful day. It's already hot out. I can tell it's gonna be a hot one. Definitely gonna get a farmer tan. Definitely. Yeah, it's already there. Look at that. See that? It's starting right there. And then I get a tan line where my gloves are too. I was telling you this yesterday. So I have like white hands and stuff like from here to here. That's where I get tanned. And then around my neck here. I was a tan line on my neck. It's a blessing and a curse. It's nice to be able to tan so well because when your skin tans, that protects you from the sun, right? That's why it does that. It's, these bodies are amazing machines. It knows how to protect you from the elements somewhat. So when I go in the sun once, I might burn once, but after that, skin doesn't burn, it just, it just turns brown. But at the same time, the skin that never touches the sunlight or that the sunlight never touches stays pasty white. So when I go to the beach, I always look like I'm wearing a white t-shirt in summertime. It's a little embarrassing and frustrating, but there's no way to get an even tan as a truck driver. What am I going to do? Like, have my shirt off all the time while I'm unloading freight, going to the customer with no shirt on? Hey, I got your freight. Don't mind my nipples. It's for the tan, I'm working on my tan. I don't think they'd like that very much, so I'm, uh, and I, I could wear like a, a muscle shirt with no sleeve or sleeveless shirts. Uh, but then I still have a white muscle shirt. I can't win. Oh well. Can't complain though. I like who I am. All right, and I've got an empty trailer behind me now. Got that last mower off of there. Moved my tarps up to the front here where I like to have them. And it's time to go get our next one. Meters, turn right on. 50 Avenue, Highway 16A. It's an hour and a half to Nisku, approximately. That's where we're gonna go and pick up. So we gotta go around uh, the east side of Edmonton, a little west of here. Still don't know what it is, but I have, it's gotta be some kind of excavator stuff or thing or something for an excavator. I don't know what's going on, but uh, I do know that this load is done. So I have to mark this down in my paperwork because uh, I'm old school that way. I like to write everything down. That way I have record of it. And then when my pay stub comes through, I can match that to this, and it should, it should match. And if it doesn't, oh, then I give a friendly phone call. That <laughs> never happens. Sometimes there's a discrepancy. Uh, the payroll, people who take care of payroll for me are super nice, super nice, I like them. So if there ever is an issue, uh, 
they take care of it right away. But they're really good at what they do. Really good. Like, it's been 12 years now, and I don't think they've messed up once. For me, anyways. Maybe I just got lucky. I don't know. What? <laughs> Never messed anything up. And I always check their work, right? Always. Because this has to do with money, with my, my living. How I feed myself, my family, and pay my bills, right? So, of course, I'm going to keep track of everything and double check everything, but I think they're really good. I've never had a problem. Okay, so my odometer is at 2,980,886 kilometers. I gotta write that down. Almost at 3 million kilometers. That would be 2 million miles. Almost. So, 2,980,886. I do some math and figure out uh, how long this trip was. So, 8886 subtract 7737. So this was really 3,149 kilometers this trip. I guess so, yeah. From Davenport to here because I went through home. It would have been shorter to go through uh, Saskatchewan, but I, I wanted to go home for a reset. I wanted to see my baby boy. What? Don't judge me. Yeah, 3,149 kilometers. That was a longer one. 149 kilometers. We take that number, we divide it, uh, by, oops, divide it by 1.61. 1,956 miles. 1,956 miles. And then I take the rate, I divide it by the miles to find out what I made per mile. And then I take all my expenses at the end of the month for fuel, maintenance and everything, uh, the shop, and I figure out how much it costs me to move the truck per mile and how much I got paid per mile and how much I kept per mile. That way the next month I sort of get an idea of how last month went and then if I want I can compare it to, you know, all the months previous to see if it's going up or at least staying the same or you don't want it to start going down. But I did take a lot of time off for Theo's birth so this month will be a, uh, a little different than most months when it comes to the numbers. It'll be quite a bit lower. Let's get going. It's 22 degrees Celsius outside. Sunshine, not a cloud. They're barely a cloud in the sky. Some a little bit of a haze over there you see in the sky. But beautiful day. It is a great day for trucking. And I say that a lot, but don't get me wrong. Not every day is a good trucking day. I just don't tr like to focus on the ones that aren't that good. because the town has been bypassed by uh, the Trans Canada which goes around town now. It's been like that for my whole life. This this town's still thriving. It's a pretty I should say it's a small city. But I don't come through here unless if I have a reason to be here, right? So 
So the place where I'm delivering this mower to is on the other side of town. It's just one road straight through town, uh, down the main uh, main street here. Just like they used to build towns, right? Pretty much down one road. Old western towns. situation. My trailer's still empty. And the sun is getting lower in the sky. My load fell through here in, well, in Nisku or in Edmonton. Wasn't able to get it loaded. It was just LTL. It was just a little bit. It was to add to my main load that I'm picking up in Saskatchewan tomorrow. So, that sucks, but what can you do, right? Just didn't work out. So I'm going to head back to a town called Clavitt, Saskatchewan. I believe that's how you pronounce it. It's just southeast of Saskatoon. So I'll probably go to Saskatoon tonight or 
maybe even straight to the town. It looks like there's a little truck stop right by the town there. I'll go to that one. And we're going to load up a 40-foot piece of culvert, I think. Which seems pretty easy. If it's what I think it is, it's just a few straps over the top. You get some uh, dunnage along the bottom just to make sure it can't roll anywhere just in case. And Bob's your uncle, you know? You're off to the races. Yeah. Kind of made me sad that I lost that load, but I didn't really lose it. Uh, the, the thing I was going to pick up, it was a skid steer. But the only way we could make that skid steer work on my load is if I put it up here on the kick, up at the front. But I'll show you here. One second. This is like a two foot almost drop onto the lower deck. So I'd have to load it from the back, drive it up to here, and then get it up on top of there. And it had no bucket on it, so I couldn't even use the bucket to push myself up onto here. It wouldn't have worked. There's just no way we could load it. You can't load it with a forklift. It's too heavy. So they're going to send another truck. They have to send a different truck with a different trailer there to pick that one up. That one didn't work out for me. Uh, they'll take care of me. That wasn't that wasn't my mistake. So now we'll head into Saskatchewan. We'll pick up our main load, and I'll probably even you know if I if I load that first thing tomorrow morning, I might even get to deliver it tomorrow evening yet, and then go home. That's what we'll try to do. Don't mind the bugs on the window right in front of you. They're our friends. It means that spring is here. I don't mind the bugs at the beginning of summer anyways, just because I'm sick of the snow. I'd rather have the bugs than the snow. And uh, I can't get them off there, I've tried. I gotta stop and uh, squeegee them off yet. And I still got winter washer fluid in there, so I don't think that eats at the bugs as, as well. We're coming up into North Battleford, Saskatchewan. On our way towards uh, just east of Saskatoon, where we got to pick up that big culvert tomorrow. So far, everything's going good. Other than that, uh, that load falling through in Edmonton, that was a bit of that was a waste of a day I'm trying to figure that out. But, I mean, it happens, right? It happens. It sucks when it happens. I'm hoping to get something out of it yet, because uh, you know I. I went all the way out there, 200 miles, <clears throat> excuse me, 200 miles out of my way. And I got nothing out of it. And I don't get paid by the mile, I get paid by the load. So I own my truck, so I, uh, when I'm, when the truck's empty, I'm not making money. Like right now, I'm not making money. So the loads I pick up have got to compensate for that. They've got to be worth it for the deadhead to get there. Deadhead means driving with no load, empty. You always have somewhat of a deadhead because you very rarely load where you unloaded, right? Well, sometimes it's a longer deadhead than other times. Had I not gone all the way to Edmonton and wasted that time and fuel, it would have only been, well, it would have been about a 300 mile deadhead for this load. Now that is quite a bit, so the load I pick up got to pay enough to make up for that, right? But when I show up for a load and I don't get a load because I, I can't get it on the trailer or it falls through, well, that's just too bad, right? I'm sure we'll figure out something. Pass done. Oh, it is? Nice. Is there parking there? A little bit. Oh, there is. They added parking in North Battleford for trucks. At the Petro Pass. Nice. Nice. I've seen a lot of new truck stops coming up. What are you doing, bud? Your lane is ending. Okay, I I gave you the space. You want to wait for me? That's fine. 
I've seen a lot of new truck stops. Esso and Petropass in Canada have been building them like crazy. And that's so good to see. You always hear about, oh, there's not enough parking. I'm one of those people that say that because it's true. There's not enough parking. But it's good to see the big chains up here of truck stops adding lots of new parking spaces. Maybe they watch my videos, I don't know. We're at the Esso, just south of Saskatoon. And this camera has amazing night shot quality. I haven't really tested it out in the dark yet. But compared to my GoPro, this is my Sony A7C. That's amazing. I can hardly see where I'm going here with my own eyes. The camera can see way better than me. That, eh? Huh. Sorry, I'm just sort of, I don't know, messing around with my gizmos here. Got a plane coming in for landing here in Saskatoon. Wonder where it came from. beautiful night. I'm out here in a t-shirt. Look at this, eh? Amazing. I am so glad. Winter time feels so long. Maybe because it is, but... With winter being so long, it actually makes you appreciate summer a whole lot more. Turn all the pretty lights off for night. I'd like to leave them on all night, but then that means I have to leave my truck running. Though all the lights are LED, and they probably don't take that much power. Oh, I could probably still turn over my truck in eight hours. But I don't want to risk having a dead battery. It's not like back in the day, like when I was riding in my dad's truck when I was a kid. I was like eight to ten years old. Back then, LED lights weren't a thing. They weren't invented yet. So... Guys who had lots of lights on their truck like me, and even more, those were all those old school incandescent lights that would always burn out all the time and they'd get really hot. You couldn't touch them. <laughs> it's total fire hazard. Oh, but uh, everyone had them. And lots of them, right? If you left those lights on in your truck overnight, even just for a few hours, oh, that would drain your battery fast. That took a lot of battery power. Some guys had to put a second alternator on their truck. I remember this. They had to have a second alternator on their truck just to power all of their lights. <laughs> now, all the lights I have on my truck use about the same energy, if not less, than just one of those bulbs. That's probably way off, but you get my, my drift. Like, I'm not a scientist, I don't know, but they use way, way, way less. Just a fraction, a tiny fraction of what the lights used to use. It's amazing how far we've come. So... I wanted to show you this. I think I've shown you this already, right? This is for the underglow underneath my uh, dashboard here. One of these evenings when I have time, I want to install them. They're blue. I got four of them. They'll match the lights in the back here and they'll sort of light up the floor in the front blue. I bought them with money I got for my birthday from my mother-in-law. So, thank you, Kathy. This is what I got with my birthday money. Part of it. Can't wait to install those. I want to hook up the power to the other ones in the back. You know, because I turn my lights off like this, right? And when I turn them on, I want everything to light up blue. 
one day after uh, like after a few years, after we got some good money in the bank, I want to have uh, I want to have quite a bit saved up before I do this. But this is the plan. Here, here we go. I'm gonna completely restore this truck top to bottom. Just give me some time, okay? I'm gonna do everything. I'm gonna sandblast the whole frame, repaint it. We're gonna put air ride front suspension on the front. Uh, all of the lights will be replaced again with those dual revolutions so that they're uh, a clear lens, but they have amber, like amber lights, just like it is now, but I can flip a switch on my dash here and they, they all turn to blue. Everything, my whole life, my whole truck's gonna glow blue. Inside note. Uh, new paint. The, the exact same paint that I have right now. I love the paint and the color on this truck. I'm just going to... I might even just... Because I just need the doors painted, really. But if I paint the doors... I'd like to repaint everything. I want to get a new hood for the truck, which have fenders. Uh, it's a, like more of a custom hood. I have fenders that come down a little bit lower on the sides. I haven't quite decided which one yet. I want to get... Uh, Stacks that come straight out from underneath and straight up without this uh, uh, muffler. Oh, why can't I think of words right now? The word, the, the muffler guard that says Kenworth on it. I want it just to be like just pipes coming straight up. Uh, same size as the ones I have on the top there now. Those are just extensions. So I think they're 8 inch. I'll probably stick with 8 inch. But uh, fiberglass fenders on the rear. I want to stretch the axle by 24 inches. Uh, I've done my measurements, and for Canadian uh, law, your entire unit from bumper to bumper can't be more than like 75.2 feet. It, they, they measure it in meters, but as a Canadian, we're weird that way with our measurements. Some stuff we do in metric, some stuff we do in American. We do both. So you hear me saying like kilometers and miles interchangeably. That's just a Canadian thing, at least in Western Canada here where I'm from. Uh, we get paid, well, I don't get paid by the mile, I get paid by the load. But uh, if you were to get paid by the mile, it would be by the mile, not by the kilometer. Uh, I do all of my uh, fuel measurements in miles per U.S. gallon and also liters per 100 kilometers. So uh, where was I going with this? Something about measurements. Yes. So I've measured my truck and the trailers that I pull and where my fifth wheel can go and slide. I can add 24 inches to my frame and still be legal. And that'll give me an extra two feet. Why would I do that? Well, it looks cool. That's probably the first reason. Looks. You don't buy a W900 for fuel economy. You buy it because it's a truck that you love, and it looks cool, and it's a W9. Why else would we buy these trucks? Why do you buy a 389 Peterbilt or a 379? You don't buy it for fuel economy. You buy it for the looks. What? <laughs> so it'll look better with a longer frame. Uh, another thing that uh, helps is with a longer frame, the ride is smoother. It's a smoother ride. Other than that, it's, uh, I'd say it's like 90% for looks, 10% for a smoother ride. <laughs> but this truck is uh, supposed to be entered into truck shows. I'll probably have it, well, I, I want to have it in the one in Steinbeck coming up this year, the Southeast Truck Show. Uh, it's going to be signed back in June, I believe. I'll talk more about that as that comes close. Uh, but it's not quite ready to win the big prizes at, like, the big shows, right? Maybe one day I can have it to the point where I can have it at, like, Mid-America Truck Show. That'd be cool. But that is pretty corporate and pretty big. I'm probably thinking more show and shines, like, around Canada and around the, the U.S., closer to where I am. Uh, just truckers hanging out, showing off their trucks. You know, you go, you have it all polished up, you clean it up, you go park it along with everybody else's, and you have a big event, and there's hot dogs and food and live music. Uh, that's the kind of stuff I'd like to do in the future, and that's what I'm working towards. Yeah, so, well, one step at a time, make this truck more and more my own. You know, I've already, I've changed a few minor things on it already, just to make it mine. So now I feel that this truck is mine uh, since I bought it. It's, uh, I've got to put my own touch on it. I've been talking here for long enough, though, so thanks for joining me today. Uh, we're hanging up the work hat because I'm off duty. I'm going back there to sleep. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to hit that like button if you did like the video. It helps me out a lot. Uh, if you do want to help me out, a free way to do that is to leave me a comment down below. Just let me know what's on your mind, what you thought with, of the video, what your favorite part was, maybe what you'd like to see more in future videos. I leave that completely up to you. Uh, it's a free space down there. Go and have fun. Just uh, be nice to everybody, please. You guys already are, so I'm just that's for the new people. 
we're a, we're a good community here. Uh, that's that's all I have to say. I have, I have a really great community that we've built up here, and uh, I love sharing this stuff with you guys. So, without further ado, I'm going to bed. Thank you.